Welcome to Relative Velocity Lesson 2, Motion in Air and Water. This is where we learn um, questions involving river crossing or flying an airplane from one point to another point when there's wind blowing in a certain direction. Yep, that kind of question. Okay, so the first, of, the first thing that we will talk about is, of course, uh, the concept behind this type of questions. Alright, the concept behind this type of question is actually rather easy to understand. Okay, so I'll just use an analogy to help you see what's going on here. Okay, so for example, alright, now there's an enemy here, okay, and uh, there's a sniper here. Okay, so of course, you know what the sniper is supposed to do, isn't it? I mean, the sniper is supposed to shoot the enemy. Okay, so, but the sniper knows, well, as well as the enemy, everybody should know, that there's, the we there's a wind blowing in this certain direction. Okay, now, so the sniper has to think. Well, do you aim? Do, the, do you think that the sniper should aim the, at the enemy directly? Okay. Now think about this. If he were to aim his rifle directly at the enemy with such a strong wind blowing in this way, well, obviously he's not going to shoot the enemy, isn't he? He's going to miss the enemy entirely and shoot somebody to the left of the enemy. Okay. All right. So this is not what the sniper would want to happen, isn't it? So. Let's think. Okay, now the sniper has to shoot the enemy with one shot directly, so he will want the bullet to travel this way. Okay, but there's a strong wind blowing this way. Therefore, being the good sniper, okay, the sniper will have to think that, hey, you know, I can't aim directly at the enemy this way, you know, otherwise I'll shoot somebody else. So the sniper will have to aim somewhere to the right of the enemy so that with the wind's help, okay, the wind will sort of blow the bullet okay in the, in this direction and therefore the bullet will end up traveling in this path okay so the concept is a very simple one okay rather common sense as well isn't it all right so uh, but the main thing that you must take away with you is this all right that if you want your bullet to travel directly to the enemy you cannot aim directly at the enemy Okay, your steering will not be your actual path. Right, it's that simple. Okay, so let's take a look at the kind of questions that we'll be seeing. All right, now um, let's talk about um, you know, aeroplane. Okay, so let's say this is Singapore. Okay, and uh, well, with Japan. Okay, so this is Japan, Tokyo. Okay, whatever. All right, so Japan. Now you you are a pilot. Okay, now you want to fly from Singapore to Japan. And you know that there is a strong wind, okay, blowing due west in this direction. So you are the pilot. You are trying to fly from Singapore to Japan this way. So now this will be your desired path, isn't it? This is one, this will be the path that you really want to travel, right? Now, then you think about it. Do you steer your aeroplane directly towards Japan? Okay. Now, of course not, isn't it? I mean, well, if you were to steer your airplane directly to this, do you think that this will be your actual path? Alright, because when the wind blows, your airplane will be changing course. Okay, so you end up somewhere here. I don't know where you end up, but you won't be end up in Japan. And being a pilot that you are, you, you don't want that to happen, isn't it? Okay, so that is not what we want it to happen. So you are the pilot, you are in Singapore, you want to fly to Japan. So you know there's a wind blowing in this direction, you will want to offset the effect from the wind. Okay, so you want to do that, you have to aim somewhere towards the right of J, Japan. And therefore, with the wind's help, okay, you will be actually traveling in this path. Okay? I hope you're getting it. It's not that difficult. So far, I haven't seen anyone really tr uh, trying very hard and, and yet still cannot understand this concept. I find this concept rather easy to teach. Okay, so um, let's talk about a river. Okay, one last one before we move on. Alright, a river. So river will have banks, isn't it? Okay, so we have parallel banks this way. Uh, now, as usual, we have a point that our destination that we want to go to. And uh, of course, we have a point that we have to start from. Okay, so a point and a destination. Now, you are still, you are captain of a boat now. Okay, and you know that now, ah, there's a, the, the, the river current. Okay, the water current is flowing in this direction. So you you are the captain of the boat, right? You would want to uh, you know travel from point P to point D. 
this way. Okay, so being the good captain that you are, and you study relative velocity, you understand this kind of concept we've been just discussing about. So, do you think you will aim your boat, or rather you you will steer your boat directly towards D? Of course not, right? So, what do you do? Well, you aim your boat slightly to the right left of point D. And therefore, with the water current pushing you down this way, right, this will be your actual path. Okay, you will be actually traveling here. Okay, get it? All right. Now, but what is the common thing, common characteristic that you see in this three simple example to highlight the concept? Now, what what do you see? Well, you always end up with a triangle, isn't it? Okay. So a triangle has three sides. Duh, everybody knows that. Okay, and now this is uh, when I need to introduce to you okay, the three sides of the triangle. Now, each side represents something, okay, and uh, what do they represent? Alright, so we need more space. So let me scroll a little bit here. Okay, no, no, no. Let's keep the picture of the Singapore Japan analogy here. Okay, by the way, this is Japan here, huh? this point. Okay, so let me just missed it. Alright, so let me just scroll a little lower. Okay, here. We just just take a look at this. Now, there will be three sides to this triangle, and these three sides are represented by three different vectors. Okay, the first one, of course, we will talk about would be v w. Okay, which rightly so to represent the velocity of the wind. Okay, w because we're talking about wind, right? So wind it represents the velocity of the wind or water. I like to use w because it works for uh, airplane questions. Okay, it works for river questions, yeah, water or wind. All right, so um, don't try to be funny. To use V C for current, you know C stands for current, and then later on you have a canoe, so you have a V C C canoe re re uh, relative to current, and then you have no idea which C is which. Okay, so keep it simple, a V W all the time. Okay, wind, water, it works, and I just keep it this way. All right, so from what we have here, this this diagram here, okay, the VW of course is rather easy to identify, isn't it? Of course, this is the wind, VW, this one, okay, this is the one, right? VW in this direction, okay. Uh, when we talk about the river example that we talked about just now, okay, this is the river, All right? So this is of course the VW, isn't it? Okay, the river current, okay, the water current, okay. The next thing that I need to highlight to you is of course the the other vector VA. Okay, now VA stands for the actual puff. Okay, actual puff. What do you mean by actual puff? Well, VA, then what does A mean? Okay, now A, of course, stands for aeroplane. Okay, so if you have a boat, you'll be VB. Okay, you have a canoe, you'll be VC, and so on and so forth. Doesn't really matter. This is quite a variable. You can use any letter you like. Okay, so for our sake here, we'll use A because we're talking about aeroplane here. Okay, alright. So, actual path. Now, what you must then come to understand is this that the concept that we've been talking about so far is a very simple one. The fact that if you were to steer your aeroplane in a certain direction, okay, you won't end up in that direction. Alright, that's the whole concept. It's unlike driving a car, whereby you know you, you aim your car in, in this way and then you'll reach destination in that that way you know what I mean so no 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 we're talking about aeroplane here so if you were to steer aeroplane this way you won't end up this here okay you end up here because there's a wind so there's a two different paths here okay one is the so-called actual path which, is, which of course represent the path that you actually take okay of course lastly all right will be this vector which is the so-called uh, relative vector and this is the uh, steering, of course. I mean, what else left, right? Okay, steering, uh, aiming. You know, and energies uh, in sniper and energy, right? Aiming. Okay, so steering, and also this represents the speed of the aircraft. Okay, in still air. Okay, the speed in still air, or the speed in still water. Uh, this is this is where trouble starts to come in. Okay, but for a moment, let's just uh, keep this aside and uh, let's just take a look at the three sides of the triangle. Get to know them better first before we tackle something even more um, complex. Okay, so um, now, according to our example here, 
Okay, now this will be our actual path, isn't it? So this will be, of course, rightly so as labeled as uh, VA. And this is our aiming, so this is our VAW. Okay, so we aim this way, the wind is blowing this way, and you end up here. Okay, so let's take a look at our river crossing example. Alright, now we are at point P. Alright, we are really traveling at this in this direction. So this is of course our VB, which stands for boat. Okay, and this is of course our aiming, isn't it? Our steering, B, uh, VBW. Okay, now the most interesting thing is this. Okay, this part here that we say that the relative vector represents the speed in still air and still water. What does it mean? Okay, and uh, what is it, what does this really mean? Velocity of air relative to, oh no, velocity of uh, the aeroplane relative to wind. Okay, now what this means is that well, if you are the wind, okay, you will be tra you will be seeing the aeroplane traveling at um, a certain speed. Okay, so um, think about it. This is the speed in still air. So, very sim simple. Um, speed in still air. Let's say the speed in still air is three hundred and sixty kilometers per hour. Okay. So, so there's an airplane that can fly three hundred and sixty kilometers per hour in still air. But in actual fact, do you think there's still air? Okay. Of course not. Where well, we know that there's wind, right? So there, there can't be still air. So therefore, in actual fact, the airplane cannot be traveling at 360 kilometers per hour because there is no still air to talk about, right? So therefore, this 360 kilometers per hour can never be the actual speed. Okay. So think about it. It's actually rather common sense, right? Uh, now, the airplane can fly at 360, uh, 360 kilometers per hour. Sometimes you fly with the wind, you may end up faster. So actual speed may be faster. Okay, but sometimes when you're flying against the wind, your actual speed may be lower, isn't it? Now the the point here is that the actual speed will not be the same all the time. Your actual speed is depending on the wind. Okay? So this speed in still air or in still water will of course not be your actual speed. So this is something that you have to understand, you have to uh, bear in mind. Okay? One more thing I want to highlight to you is this. Now this is always the velocity of the aircraft relative to the wind. Never, never will we be interested in the velocity of the wind relative to the aircraft. No, no, no. We won't be interested in this. Okay? We are always interested in the aircraft more than interested in the wind. Okay? So because we're steering the airplane, duh, of course, right? So, um, for those of you who think that you know, this is kind of hard to understand, uh, speed in still air, still water. Um, do click on the next um, section where we have a mini animation to explain this in uh, greater detail. Perhaps you need that and uh, you can see uh, what I'm talking about from there. Okay, so for now, this is the basic concept. Alright, and uh, using this, we will be able to do um, questions that we'll see in example one.